How are we doing today, folks? Today I have a review for you that's going to be more of a review for some of you that have watched some of my previous reviews. However, it is new and revised as it is a newer model. And that would be the new Apple TV third generation. Now, obviously, it's been out for a little while now. Uh, as some of you may have noticed, my previous videos were hacks on the Apple TV second generation unit. However, with the market share that it was, I was able to sell my old one and get two of these new bad boys because if you did watch any of my reviews with the tutorial on the ATV Flash, I don't see any value in it for myself. So hacking it is not a big thing to me. These are currently unhackable. Of course, they who knows for how long that's going to be. But let's go ahead and get right into the video, show you what I like about it. Obviously, it's going to be a, a, a quick review, but I'm going to go through everything again and... Uh, some things that I've noticed from the the second generation to the third generation. So as most of you know, I'm not a big key of uh, you know doing the unboxings uh, because it's just a box and it's house package. However, with any other Apple product, it's packaged very. The presentation of the packaging is very nice. Kept all the packaging here, so if I ever do go to sell this, I can package it up exactly how I purchased it. However, that's the box. Yay! 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 Here's the Apple TV itself. Again, here's the size, if you can see my hand. Um, I guess I could always do the standard money test, right? And pull out a, well, let's see, I have a $5 bill right here. Uh, this way you can actually see about what size it is. So it goes from the edge of the bill over to about the uh, end of the first H in the. So that's the $5 bill. There's the size of the actual unit. It is about square roughly. It is a little longer than it is wide. Uh, and of course, here's all the ports in, it, in the back. Same as the Apple TV second generation. It does have a micro USB port for plugging into the computer for updating software if you want to do it that way. Otherwise, of course, it connects to the network, so you can do it uh, updates directly through the network. Power connection. HDMI connection. This only does connect via HDMI, so there is no compositor or component videos, just like the second generation. Uh, optical audio output, so if you want to run audio output directly to your older receiver that does not have the HDMI input, then you can still do that. And as well, Ethernet cable. Obviously, there's Wi-Fi built into this as well, so you do not have to use the Ethernet cable if you decide to use Wi-Fi, rather. So, otherwise, it does have the small indicator light here for... Uh, showing you that it's on and of course when it goes into sleep mode or turns off the light, light does go off. So that's the Apple TV. So here we are on the main screen of the Apple TV. I've already logged in. I've put in all my credentials for um, my Apple ID as well as I've logged into all the services that I currently use for my own personal use. Um, and then I didn't show you this but of course the Apple TV 2 remote looks exactly like the third generation remote. <laughs> They're both the same. Um, so, little remote, I love this dang thing. However, you can also uh, use a universal remote. I also have a Logitech Harmony remote that I use on all of my devices. So I have this programmed for my Apple TV as well. And you can also do the remote app that you can download for your iPhone or iPad. Uh, it is, or iPod for that matter. Really neat remote, you can actually control the Apple TV. Nice thing is that if you ever go to a YouTube or Netflix or Hulu and you want to search for something, same, I believe, you know, with any of the places where you can do a search, it'll actually bring up the keyboard in the app, so you can actually use the keyboard. So that's a lot. Real nice. Otherwise, let's first go to a brief list of the different items, the different, what I guess what Roku calls channels, that the Apple TV is going to offer you. First is the obvious, the movies. This, these three, or these two, I should say, connect directly to iTunes and allows you to see what iTunes has to offer you. Uh, whenever you come into uh, one of these, so like movies app here, if you're already logged into your Apple ID, you'll see the latest movies, basically newest on the left, and then it goes down the line older, older, older. Uh, also, you also see if you do have any recent purchases, one, two, or three even movies will come up. It'll even say purchase. There'll be a bar, obviously, to separate the things you that aren't technically purchased but are available. Um, of course, there just went to sleep because it's been up, uh, going into the uh, screensaver mode. But, uh, so there's End of Watch is one of the latest movies that I've purchased myself through iTunes. Um, and then of course if you actually go into it, uh, you'll be able to see, if you go to your purchase tab, you'll be able to see specific movies that you've actually purchased through the actual, um, through the, uh, anything that you've purchased with iTunes, whether it's through the Apple TV, through your iPhone, iPad, any device, 
iTunes on your computer, as long as it's logged into the same Apple ID. Uh, top movies, these are movies available for purchase through the store. You can go to genres, actually look up with a specific genre of movie if you're looking for a specific type. You can use Genius to actually look at your existing collection. Based on that, it'll offer uh, things. So based on Barbie and a Mermaid Tale, which my daughters love Barbie, so we bought one of these Barbie movies, they recommend these. Um, movies for me just based on my entire collection. You can also search. So you can literally search any type of movie, uh, name, uh, leaving a new actor, anything. And it'll actually bring up recommendations or at least try to give you exactly what you're looking for. So let's back back out. Same thing can be said with TV shows. So obviously here's something that I've purchased. These actual three are movie or shows that I'll, I guess I got that one for free for the first episode, but Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, I have a season pass with both those movies. So those are two movies, two shows that I've obviously updated fairly recently. Otherwise, top TV show, Downtown, or, uh, Downton Abbey is one of them. Now, if we go into TV, TV shows, it's very similar to music. Same setup, same feel as the new iTunes as well. They, they kind of mirrored off each other. Uh, you can obviously go over here, see your purchase shows. You can go to your favorites, which I guess Phineas and is one of my favorites. I actually would agree with that. Top TV shows, you can obviously see what's currently available. Um, all the top TV shows. Uh, networks, you can actually look for a specific network. Any of the major networks obviously will have their own channel within there which will show all those TV shows from those networks. Genres, same thing as the movie. Look at a specific genre. Genius will actually look at things that you've purchased. Again, same thing as the movies. So, based on Breaking Bad, they recommend these shows. Then search, same thing as the movies again. You can search for a specific sh movie, actor, things like that. I apologize for the phone call again. It seems like I always get phone calls. Uh, so that's TV shows. Same thing as the movies, just with TV shows instead. Uh, next we're going to go over music. Music is obviously things that you've already purchased. Now, music basically is if you have iTunes Match turned on, you'll actually be able to see music that you have through iTunes Match. Um, I do have iTunes Match, which is another video possibly in the future that I'm going to do. Um, and so I have a lot of CDs that I've transferred from CD, as well as some that I've actually purchased through iTunes or Amazon. And lots of music in there and it is actually pretty neat especially with the phone but uh, I don't really listen to music in my home entertainment center so much so but that's one thing that you do get. Uh, computers. Computers is obviously exactly what you think so any iTunes library that you have available on a computer somewhere as long as you have the computer turned on and you have the iTunes iTunes opened up on that computer and sharing turned on and you're using the same Apple ID as the Apple TV, sh those computers will actually show up here. Now, obviously, I only have, if you only have one computer turned on with iTunes sharing with that Apple ID, it will automatically show up here. If you have two, as soon as you click computers, you'll actually have multiple computers here that you can choose from. Now, I only have one, so it directly goes right into my main library. There's going to be music, and you can basically play everything through there. So, obviously, if you have, if you don't have iTunes Match and you want to listen to your music, just turn your computer on and share it, and you can access it through computers. So, that's one thing. Settings is obviously just changing all the settings. That's where you're actually going to turn on. That's where you're going to log into your Apple ID for uh, iTunes for uh, for the iTunes sharing for computers, uh, as well as any of the AirPlay modes available as well. So let's come back over here, head down. So the next thing, trailers. Trailers is exactly what it sounds like as well. It's actually a direct connection to Apple's movie trailer market. So you can actually go into here and actually watch movie trailers as they are released. They always show up the newest on the left, and they go older in the just added category. Uh, they ha always have some featured ones up here at top where you can actually see ones that sometimes Apple actually gets specific trailers just for them or just released through Apple. And of course other mar uh, markets get that as well. Otherwise you can look at uh, top movies in, in theaters, so you can actually watch the trailer before you go to the theater to watch the movie. Opening soon, these are obviously movies that are going to be opening soon in the theater. Some more um, featured content. Most popular most popular trailers, uh, these, and then we they even do a, a Rotten Tomatoes meter, so most popular, most top reviewed in Rotten Tomatoes is going to be in the left, and then less and less as you go to the right. Um, with any of these, even with these top movies, there's going to be a significant amount of them. However, sometimes, uh, obviously, if we get a lot of trailer dumps, sometimes you'll get multiple trailers per day. If you do get a lot and you can't find yours, you can always... Um, what am I looking for? There we go. 
all the way to the top, you were at top trailers. We can go to the calendar mode and actually look at the calendar when they were actually released uh, or when they're going to be released. Uh, you can actually browse specifically by genre. Um, and obviously, it sorts it alphabetically. That's what I believe it does. Yeah. So, you can also do showtimes by your zip code. You So, you can enter in the zip code for your city and actually look at showtimes specifically on different movies in your area. Um, and then last would be search. If you want to search for a specific movie trailer, throw the search in here and you'll be able to spit it right out. That's trailers. Hulu Plus. Now I'm not going to get all into this, but I'm going to at least show you the menu system for Hulu Plus. Obviously if you have a Hulu Plus subscription, you're obviously at least familiar with Hulu. Uh, but if you're interested, the nice thing about I I really do like the menu system on the Apple TV for Hulu and Netflix. It's pretty easy, so popular recommended is shows that are uh, popular through Hulu. Fail vs. Q, those are things that you actually set up yourself. That obviously put in your favorites, you set up your own queue. Just like Netflix. Recently watched things that you've watched just recently. I watched a lot for my, my kids through Netflix and Hulu. Um, TV, you can actually just go into TV and then you can actually look by genre, by network, by popular recommended, A through Z, so it'll actually separate them all out, A through Z. And of course the networks would be the major ones, ABC, NBC, CBS. Fox, um, and then other pro providers as well. Hulu is going to be one of them because Hulu does actually have uh, specific content that they only do themselves. Um, and they'll separate. Now Nickelodeon is also a new one, so you actually can get a lot of Nickelodeon shows now. iCarly, Victorious, even though those shows are dying, um, there's several others in there as well. So PBS is another one. There also is movies, not a huge movie selection like Netflix has, and really not a whole lot of new stuff. It's mainly old stuff. The Criterion Collection is obviously one of the big ones. Ooh, super size me. There you go. Um, you can look by popular recommended genre, trailers. They're obviously going to have trailers through uh, Hulu Plus as well, so sometimes you may not be able to access them through Apple's trailers because they didn't get it. However, Hulu is another place to look. And of course, then they'll also separate them A through Z. Kids. It's going to have all the kids programming, whether it's movies or TV shows. So that's one thing. If you're if you're just looking for kids programming and you want your kids to do it, you can just direct them here and it'll actually separate things out um, based on, obviously, kids programming. So pretty simple. Uh, trailers, there's an, obviously another direct way to look at trailers. Then you can actually search, and then you can sign out if you wanted to sign in with a different username. Netflix. Netflix has a very similar menu lay layout to Hulu Plus, which is why I really like it. Everything feels very similar. Suggestions recently watched, so recent, just the same as we did with Hulu. Genres, TV shows, you can actually look at TV shows within the TV shows. It'll break it down as well into several different category suggestions based off what I've watched and what I have my favorites. Recently added dramas, comedies, it'll, it'll break everything basically out. New releases is going to show things that were just added to, to Netflix. Um, it'll, your instant queue, that's where you actually have your queue that you set up just for kids. Same thing as we did with uh, uh, Hulu Plus, where it's actually going to have programming specifically for kids. You can go to suggestions or recent watch. The nice thing is with characters, it can actually have you can give the you know your child and they'll be able to look at the character. Oh, I want to watch you know Dora or you know Captain America, and they'll show you the things with those characters. And obviously, that's for the Avengers. Oh, I'm sitting on my feet for so long. Um, other than that. You can also search with Netflix and then, of course, sign out as well. YouTube is another uh, category where you're going to actually be able to look at YouTube videos. Now, I do this. I watch this a lot because, obviously, as a YouTuber, I also i am on YouTube a lot. So, watching the featured videos, I watch a lot. Seeing the, you know, what's new, what's trending, things like that. Um, most viewed, you can actually go into most viewed. With any of these categories, you'll have subcategories up here on the right-hand side where what's the most viewed today? Obviously, you can scroll through that. This is the most viewed today. If you go up to the top, you can go to the right. Or actually, if you're in here at anywhere, you can actually uh, just head back up to the top. It doesn't matter where you are. If you just thumb over to the right, this is now the most viewed items for this week. One more time, these are the most viewed items of all time. Um, so you can obviously, you want to see, oh, the, I know this one movie is the most popular of all time. This is where they're going to be. Uh, otherwise, you can just go to today. That's where I always end up and take a peek at what's trending today. Uh, you can also see the most recent things that are uploaded the most recently. 
top rated, top rated videos, things that obviously get a lot of thumbs up, a lot of ratings to them. History, you can actually look at your history, what you've actually watched yourself, search for a specific video, and then this is your account. Obviously, if I wasn't signed in, you could hit the sign out or the sign in button and log in, and you can actually then go into your own account, see your videos, your favorites, watch later subscriptions, things that you would actually normally do within YouTube itself. So the nice thing is, within this, if you were on YouTube on your computer, you wanted to show somebody a video on here, uh, maybe you weren't on their network, you could actually just, you know, maybe you're at work or, so, or somewhere, you could just basically, you know, hit that as one of your favorite videos, and then come back to the Apple TV and do it right through the Apple TV if you didn't want to do an AirPlay video or anything like that and show your favorites. So that's YouTube. Same thing with Vimeo. Vimeo is going to be very different. Of course, Vimeo is a little different atmosphere than YouTube, but you're going to see very similar things. So featured channels where you're actually going to see featured videos and channels that are actually going to be within the Vimeo ecosystem. Um, Vimeo staff picks, uh, video school, things like that, where they'll have a, a lot of featured content. You will also be able to look at the category, look at different categories of videos, watch later. So if you actually set things to watch later within your own account, uh, you can look at your feed, things that you've liked, things that you've wanted to watch. You can actually look at videos that you've actually uploaded, my likes, and then search for content itself. I'm not as big a Vimeo user as I am YouTube, but it is something that I do like to watch occasionally because there is some really neat content. So back over here on the left. So. Actually, the next three I'm going to just go through real quick because I do not have accounts for them. But MLB, NBA, and NHL are all three paid subscription plans just like Netflix and Hulu are. However, you have to have a subscription plan through these networks. You can actually sign up online. I don't. You may be able to actually sign up through the Apple TV as well. So yeah, subscribe to MLB.TV where you'll actually be able to create your own account. It is $0.99 cents a month or $3.99 a year right now. Um, and the nice thing is, is that you are able to watch, basically, I believe, almost all of the games. And not only currently, but also previous games as well. So things that are stored. So if a game like showed up today, tomorrow, you could actually go on and watch it. You don't have to watch it live. Uh, so you have access to a really big catalog. Same with NBA and NHL. You actually will get uh, connected to their entire catalog, which is pretty neat. Podcasts are exactly what they sound like. Same with iTunes, where you can actually look at podcasts. You can actually do this directly through the Apple TV as well. Um, start with your favorites. You can actually look. So I'm going to have some of my favorites in here. It'll tell you how many episodes you haven't watched or listened to lately, which is a lot for me. I haven't been listening as much as I should. You can also look at top podcasts. Things are actually uh, you know popular right now. Genres, break it down by a different genre, look at providers, so like if you were ABC News, if I want to see the podcast that ABC puts out, it looks like they do three of them, so that's with any of them as well, and then search, you can actually search for a podcast that you're specifically looking for, or a creator for that matter. Radio, you can actually listen to live radio right through the Apple TV, the nice thing is, is I mean, you're not looking for, oh, I want to look up, listen to 105.3, no, you're basically looking, well, I want to listen to something from the 90s, and you know they'll have a whole bunch of them. You can try different ones. Of course, you can once you find one that you like, you're gonna want to use that frequently. But that's it's basically very similar. It's, it's simple. It's just going through categories. Next is gonna be PhotoStream. PhotoStream will obviously show you the last all your photos that you've been uh, doing through your PhotoStream. You can also look at your shared photo streams that you have on your phone or your iPod or any iOS device. So I have 61 photos in my family one, 335 in my main photo stream. Now the nice thing is is that you can also set this, turn it off, you want to just keep the photo stream, but you don't want to show the photo, uh, the, the shared photo stuff, you can do whatever you want, but the nice thing is once you log in, you actually have photo stream turned on, when you are actually up in the uh, settings, you can actually go to like your screensaver and set your photos to my photo stream, so when I, when the screensaver comes up, I want to show my photos, not National Geographic or something like that, and of course then you can actually change how you want that to look as well. Flickr, you can actually access Flickr. It's not really logging into Flickr. You can actually just add a Flickr contact. So that's one of my Flickr ones right there. And I'm basically able to look at my Flickr photos directly through the Apple TV. And then the Wall Street Journal Live. Actually, something that I've really started to use more frequently. I started using it during the election to kind of follow that. But when you go into the Wall Street Journal, you can actually watch live news. Now, if you hit live now, right now it's about the time of day where they have live material. It's going to tell me that it should at least by 4 p.m., 
is where, when they usually start doing live content. Oh, maybe not. I guess we have it right now. So you can actually watch Wall Street Journal live. You can also go back to, well, they still have the election 2012 on there, so you can actually watch material from that election. You can look at the schedule. What are the schedule events? So right now they have Asia and the news hub, and you can see different things. Oh, there's something about oh, the whole Apple invest investing thing. And, of course, see the different things, what time they'd actually be going. Now, if, now obviously, these are at 10.30 a.m. Uh, you can actually click on this and watch that after the fact. It's actually recorded, so you can actually go back and watch it. All videos by category, and then, of course, search as well. So that is, in a handbasket, Apple TV, the channels available. I'm going to go through the settings a little bit as well real quick. Just real quick, I'm just going to touch on it. General is going to be the general setup of the device. About You can actually name it. Now, I have two Apple TVs now. I have one in my bedroom, now one out here. So that's was the big push to me to get the two off of my Apple TV 2 that I sold. Um, so I have I had named them separate. Nice thing is you go in here, they have pre-named settings, or you can do your own custom. But I just used the living room. Uh, you set up your network. Obviously, I'm Ethernet in, so if I click on network settings, it is showing that I'm in Ethernet. If I unplug that, uh, it'll actually allow me to connect via Wi-Fi. Parental controls. If you want to set up parental controls so that um, if your kids are using this and you don't want them to view aggressive material, obviously you can just kick that on and set your restricted movies to PG, so anything that's above that, they won't be able to watch. Um, same with podcasts, everything like that. Everything like that. Remotes, uh, you can actually add separate remotes. The remote app, you can actually turn it off, even, I believe. But you can also learn remotes. So if your remote comes unpaired or you get a new one, you can actually pair it back up to the device. Update the software. This is where you obviously come in to update if you want to just do it like I do and like probably most people do over the air updates. Time zone, you can change that, which I probably should because I don't think I'd actually set that. Set that automatically. Sounds good. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Change to Chicago. Good. Sleep after one hour. Just saying that after I, if I don't touch it after one hour, just turn the, you know, go put the device to sleep. Send that data to Apple. Basically, you can choose whether you want to want want to or not share information with them. You can change language accessibility. You can actually change it so it actually can do voiceover. So if I turn voiceover that. Voiceover on. Speech rate. This pitch. Power. So it'll actually read everything that you do. Accessibility menu. So I'm going to turn that back off because I don't need that. But that's one one thing. If you have a hard time reading, you can actually use VoiceOver. Um, legal reset. And this is where you actually can reset your Apple TV back to factory settings. Or if something's glitchy at all, you can actually come over to the general menu, just hit restart. It'll just restart the, just like restarting your computer, it'll just restart the Apple TV without you un having to come over and unplug the cord. Um, screensaver, like I showed you, actually is allowing you to set your screensaver. Start after how long do you want before, if you don't touch anything after five minutes, it'll just turn the screensaver on, uh, show during music. So if music's playing, you can show the screensaver. Uh, and then, of course, what do you want to use and then the settings you want to use. iTunes Store, this is where you would actually log in, all your preferences, video resolution. I want 1080p, obviously, if I can. Um, how to sort the videos. Uh, iTunes Match, obviously, is where you turn that on. Audio and video. This is where you can set all your um, basic settings. So, obviously, I want to make sure that Adobe Digital is at least not set to off. It's on auto right now, so it automatically puts it out on Adobe Digital. Closed captioning, you can HDMI output. I want that out. Obviously, I want to use um, all that. AirPlay, you can turn AirPlay on or off accordingly. Obviously, it has to be... Um, a device plug that's using that's using the same network connection as well as signed in with the same Apple ID and then of course you can add, also add a password so if you have multiple people that are using that same device and you don't want them messing around with it and you just want to have a password for yourself so they can't just keep sending stuff up to the Apple TV you can obviously add a password computers this is where you can turn uh, sharing on or off it comes off so you actually man you have to actually set this on if you actually want to use it obviously I'm signed in so I turn it on and then of course you can actually just send the device to sleep if you don't want to wait for the one hour that typically is going to wait so that's the just of Apple TV and things that I've uh, 
noticed with the uh, third generation over the second generation is speed. Now they did go from the, I believe the A4 to the A5 chip. There is a noticeable difference in speed, specifically in menus and um, poppiness when it doesn't have to just wait for a network. It is just going from menu to menu and things that it's already downloaded. It's a lot poppier. It doesn't seem to. Um, so far, I haven't have, had to restart this model yet. Uh, now that may mean nothing, but I think because they actually put more memory on board, um, I believe they went from either from 256 or 512 or 512 to 1 gig. Anyway, you look at it, it's running better and it's running faster. So I can only imagine if they added more material to this, it's going to run better. And if somebody ever is able to ha to hack this and put the ATV flash on it. I can only imagine that ATV Flash is going to run a little better too. Um, that said, I really don't need it and I love it just stock. So, um, other than that, that's Apple TV. And there's uh, some things that I. There's not very many things I don't like about Apple TV other than, you know, if you want to do any of that web browsing things, Google TV is going to be better for that. However, I have an iPad so I can do that as well. So that's one. the next thing I'm going to show you is some of the AirPlay items. Okay, so I have my iPad put up here and I'm going to show you this in the uh, the most easiest way, I guess, the, <laughs> the most easiest, uh, great English, right? The easiest way to show you how to do this, obviously I have the Apple TV up here in the background. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to actually try to mirror this exact display. So if you have an iPad 2 or higher or an iPhone 4S or higher, or newer I should say, uh, you can actually mirror your entire device without actually doing worrying about the airplay of specific videos or photos. So first what we're going to do is we're going to take the home button and we're going to double click it. What that's going to bring up is the application bar at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the right tw uh, just once I guess. Click on the airplay button which looks like this little TV with a triangle which is the airplay button. And I'm going to select the living room Apple TV which is my Apple TV that I have on and turn mirroring on. When I do that my device actually becomes mirrored up on the display. Everything I do on the device is going to show up on the dis on the TV as well. So, for instance, uh, I have a game that I like to play. It's just a little game called Ski Safari. Love it. If you want to check it out for 99 cents, I actually have a. I'm going to be doing a review if I haven't already done it. I can't remember. I have on my App Boots channel. Uh, but obviously, everything that I show on the device is going to display on the TV. Now, is it going to be as fluent? <laughs> That's all a good question, but usually there's going to be some kind of lagginess, of course, between it because it's going over the, the network connection. So, I'm just going to play real quick and just kind of show you that how gameplay is going to be on it. Um, now, if I'm playing something that even has more graphics power necessary, it's probably not going to be as smooth as this, but even this isn't perfectly smooth even obviously looks a lot better on the iPad than it does on the device or on the TV but it doesn't look terrible it looks actually pretty good for a network mirror so that's gaming through it the next thing I was going to show you is something that I did with my um, tutorial over ATV flash or, or my review on ATV flash and that is the ability to show uh, things from your computer onto your TV using Plex. So I'm going to go to my lifestyle folder, which is where I keep the Plex app. Plex is a media server that I have installed on my computer right now. Oh, right to review later. So these are things that are I have available for me to watch. Um, I'm going to actually just go into CX550V, which is a, a folder of mine. This is a, a I guess I actually updated that a lot of a lot of uh, videos I actually removed from here. Um, I'm putting in a different folders that I'm working on. So here's a video of my daughter. The TV Connect. It says right here it's going to be played directly onto the TV. And as you can see on the Plex app, it's just saying it's playing on the TV. And that's an M an ABC HD file that I have on my computer uh, for my daughter's birthday party. It plays just as good as it did with my app my ATV Flash on the Apple TV too. If not better because at the same time when I just hit done here I can actually go back I can scroll through these if you remember if you ever if you watched my tutorial on or my review it was a lot slower to be able to get through these menus now obviously I have to wait for the icons to load to see what actually I'm looking at but within it within any of these I can actually look at oh I can hit the little info button it'll bring up information about them obviously it's mirroring directly on the TV as well um, 
you can see that it's 1080p HD.264 5.1 Dolby Digital. Um, and then I can uh, just click over the side and put it away. A lot of these are from different reviews I've done or family vacations or different activities that I've done because they're just my camcorder. So that's the ATV or the uh, Plex app. Now um, you can actually look at things that were just recently added. And there's a lot, but uh, yeah, lots of lots of good stuff there. I'm gonna go ahead and actually close out of that app. Um, so that's that's AirPlay mirroring. Now, obviously, if I come back down here, scroll to the right, I can go back in here. I can just turn mirroring off, which will bring the display back up, and then anything I want to show through either my photo or uh, so. If I go to my photo my photo stream here, bring up a, a picture of my family. Actually, it'd be better if I did a video. So I found. Let's see if I can find a video real quick. I don't know if I, where's the last video I took on this. Hmm. Maybe I deleted all my videos because they took up a lot of space. But if you have, basically, if you have AirPlay turned on, any video you play will automatically show up on the on the TV screen. So I'm gonna go back to my iPad and get rid of AirPlay altogether off the device. So that's AirPlaying from your Apple T from the iPad to the Apple TV. Now this is gonna be done with the Apple TV two. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, the iPad 2, 3, and the new 4th generation, as well as the iPhone 4S and iPhone 5. In the I, in anything below that, the first app, the iPad or the, iPad, or the iPhone 4 or, or older, you'd be able to do AirPlay for videos and, and uh, uh, pictures and things like that, but you wouldn't be able to actually mirror the entire device. That said, I'm going to go back to my lifestyle. You can also do uh, AirPlay within apps themselves. So right now I don't have... AirPlay turned on at all, and I can go to uh, my uploads, videos that I've personally uploaded myself. Um, so here's a, uh, let's see if there's a video of my daughter doing, throwing a, throwing a, or hitting a ball, and so it might take a, a second for it to load here. All depends on my internet connection, but you basically within the app, with a lot of apps, you'll get the little AirPlay menu up in here as well. So I can click on that. I can hit Living Room TV. And what happens is it'll actually just AirPlay that video up to the TV. So that's another way of, of AirPlaying. You can actually do it through through some apps themselves. Will actually have it built into the app. So that's AirPlay, and that's a pretty, I mean, obviously fast way to to do it. Um, but that's one thing you can do with an Apple TV that you can't do with a whole lot of other things is the AirPlay ability and the ease of use of the AirPlay. So there you have it folks. Tried to go into as depth as possible without getting too cluttered but obviously the video went longer than I probably originally anticipated. With that said, I'm actually very happy that I made the switch from the eight, Apple TV 2 to the third generation. And the reason is, is that it definitely is speedier. It is a little quicker at opening up the, the various channels or apps or whatever you want to call them. And the menus seem to click a little faster. Things tend to load a little faster. Whether or not, I mean, obviously with the, the videos, things like that, it definitely handles the higher definition video. Now, one thing I did notice with my, AT, my Apple TV 2 versus the Apple TV 3 is that with my iPhone with the uh, 1080p video, it seemed to play a little better on the Apple TV 3. Now, that makes sense because it is a 1080p uh, encoder on it, rather, or, de or decoder, I guess, where the Apple TV 2 was only a 720p. So, and that's all based on the chipset and the, what it can actually handle based on how obviously fast and powerful the chipset was. So, I'm glad I did it. I got a decent amount of money out of my Apple TV 2 and basically enough money to justify the cost of two Apple TV 3s. So, I'm happy because I can actually watch my content in two different rooms. And like you, said, like you saw with my Plex app on my iPad, I had the same app on my iPhone. I can actually watch that content, AirPlay, directly onto the, the TV with either mirroring or not. You can actually do it either way. Watch that all through the, uh, through the Apple TV online. Being able to access it faster through the app is, is a lot nicer than just using the Apple TV, the hacked Apple TV 2. So I'm happier and uh, Apple's happier because I don't have anything that's jailbroken. So. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can post those below. Uh, I, I 
absolutely love everybody that helps support the channel. Be sure to let your friends know about us, and if you have any recommendations, let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate all the feedback, and uh, if you want to subscribe, click that subscribe button up there. That's what it's there for. So if you have any questions, again, post below or direct to me. So thanks again for watching. This was the Tech Gooch, and I will see you again with my next video.